Don't you think it's like amazing how some random dude in the world can just hit record on a video player and somehow spread ideas and teachings to like people all around the world. I think that's just like the craziest thing. And like whenever I get someone who comments saying like thank you or like this cleared something up, that is literally why I do what I'm doing right now. Every one of these videos takes a long time to make, edit. I take notes for every video. I have like a lesson plan. Just wanted to say that that means a lot, so. So today we're going to address the question, find the second largest element in an array. So this is kind of a weird question. Whenever we're trying to find something in an array, we think of sorting it, we think of finding the largest element, but a pit, wow, I just ran into the board. But apparently for this question, we need to find the second largest element in the array. We have an array here, it might be sorted, it might not be sorted. So the second largest element here is going to be 10 because the largest element is 11 and then the second largest is 10. It could be this 10, it could be this 10, either of those. So this is a question I got for a big N interview. It was for a freshman sophomore program. This question is not that difficult. I kind of find it interesting how, although like you have to sign NDAs for certain companies, I still see like questions on Glassdoor and like, I don't know, that's just funny. Like, all right, so for this question, we're going to look at two approaches and I want to take you through the thought process that I had as I solved this question when I got it real time. As soon as I got this question, what came to my mind first is when I see largest, when I see K largest, K smallest, the third largest, the fourth largest, smallest, whenever I see sizes, I think of my data structures, I think of a heap, I think of a min and max heap that allow me and help me to find the largest of something, the minimum of a group of elements. Those are data structures that help me. And we're going to see that it turns out that the solution that I ended up doing was one with like pointers and stuff. We'll, we'll go through that. But let's see the heap approach first. All right, so going back to our intuition, we see largest, we say, hey, if I want to find the second largest item, maybe I should use a heap, but what kind of heap? So if we're trying to find the largest items, what will help us is a min heap because what we don't care about is the smallest items. So what we're going to do is maintain a min heap. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep it at size two and when it goes over capacity, we throw away the smallest item. So at the end of our iteration, at the end of our processing, what we're going to have in the heap is going to be the two largest items. All right, so the way that we start this walkthrough is we're going to start at the first element. We're going to add the first element to the heap. So first we ask ourselves, does the heap contain this element? No, it doesn't, we can add it. And then we move on in our progress. And then we ask ourselves, does 10 exist in the heap? No, it doesn't, add it to the heap. And you'll see why we need to ask our question whether this item exists in the heap. So now we're at eight, does eight exist in the heap? No, it does not, so we add eight to the heap. But we notice we have gone over capacity. So what we do is this is a min heap, so we are able to evict the smallest item. We have access to that item. So now we can just access the negative one and then we can just remove it. So you notice as we go through this, we are maintaining the two largest elements. When we go over, when we go over capacity, we will remove the smallest item. When we finish the array, we're gonna have the two largest elements. And yes, there's going to be edge cases with empty states, arrays with only one item, arrays without a second minimum item. So those are like edge cases. And so now, does nine exist in the heap? It does not, so add nine. And so now we see we need to remove an item because we've hit capacity of two, so remove this item, the smallest one. And now advance. All right, and we see 10. And what we notice is, we notice that 10 already exists in the heap. This will not give us any more information about the largest items because we already have this item in our heap and we have track of it. So we don't even need to take into account this item, it already exists. Then we go to the nine. So does nine already exist in the heap? Yes, it does, so we don't even need to add it because we already have track of it. Does negative eight exist in the heap? No, it does not. Add negative eight to the heap. So now our heap is over capacity. Remove the smallest item, it's going to be the item we just added. And then we move on to 11. So 11 does not exist in the heap, add 11 to the heap. Now we remove the smallest item. Now all we do is we do either a peak or a remove operation 
on the min heap, and that is going to yield us the second largest item, which is 10. This is what I came up with during the interview. So the thing is, why would I even add the negative eight if I'm just going to remove it? I could just peek and I would see that negative eight is less than the smallest item, so there's no reason to even add it to the heap. So this was something that didn't occur to me because I was under pressure, and again, when you're under pressure, you're not thinking as sharply. Anyway, let's look at the complexities of how the solution would work out if we made this work. So for the space complexity, our heap is going to be only holding up to two items. So what's going to happen is we are just going to use constant space. That is because what the space complexity is, as our input gets arbitrarily large, how does our space usage increase and scale? It won't scale, it's going to stay constant. So that's why that's constant. So now after I presented this approach, my interviewer was like, okay, okay, that could work, but let's take this another way. Why don't we use two pointers? So now let's look at the two pointer approach. Well, this isn't really two pointers, it's like two local variables that point to the first and second largest item, but let's see this in a walkthrough. And so now this is the two local var this is the two local variable or two pointer approach. We're going to keep track of the first maximum and we're going to keep track of the second maximum in the array. And I forgot to initialize these. So we see negative one. So what we do is we say, does this item beat the first maximum? Yes, it does. Negative one is now our first max item. And now we look at 10. Does 10 beat our first maximum item? Yes, it does. So what happens is our first maximum becomes our second maximum and the 10 becomes our first maximum. So now this is what happens. So all we did was move down the negative one and now 10 is our first maximum item. So does eight beat the first maximum? No, it does not. So then we drop down. We say, does eight beat the second maximum? Yes, it does. So now eight is the second maximum. So now we say nine, does nine beat the 10 as first maximum? No, it does not. Does it beat eight as the second maximum? Yes, it does. So does 10 beat 10 as the first maximum? No, it does not beat 10 because 10 is 10. But does 10 beat nine? Yes, it does. But the problem is 10 is already our first maximum. So this is an edge case. This is why this is kind of like a beginner slash like edge case, like vision question, because if we do put 10 as the second maximum, yes, it beats nine, but what, would, what it would do is it would wipe out the nine and we would have a 10 and a 10 here, we would lose track of the second maximum. So now we just move on. So now nine, does nine beat the first maximum? No, it does not. Does nine beat the second maximum? No, it does not. So we move on. So does negative eight beat the first maximum? It does not. Does negative eight beat the second maximum? No, it does not. So now we are at 11. Does 11 beat the first maximum? Yes, it does. So 10 becomes the second maximum and 11 becomes the first maximum. And now we are finished. So our second max item is going to be 10. So the gist of this problem is all we do is one comparison. We see, do I beat the first max? No. Do I beat the second max? Yes. I need to adjust the second max only if the item that just beat my second max is not the first max. So I do not lose track of an item here by pushing it out accidentally. That is the crux of this problem. That is the gist of it. So now let's look at time and space. So now this is very straightforward. We have O of n time where n is the length of the array. We're going to be doing a linear scan touching all n elements and we're going to be using constant space, just constant local variables, primitives. This will not scale our space as we get arbitrarily large, as our input gets arbitrarily large. So this is the time and space. So if this was a clear explanation, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. We are trying to do videos every day to help software engineers prepare for the interview. We had kind of an easy question today, but it still matters to grasp the easier questions because sometimes they can trip you up even when you can do the harder one. So subscribe to the channel, like this video if you like the video, and we are...